So science fiction is a canvas to project any story on that does not work in regular fiction. Stellaris is more of a, an example of this, where a canvas is put into place, and, and then it gives you, the player, the tools to paint with, and to draw your own story using the mechanics that are inherent into the game. Now, Paradox Development Studio games, with their sprawling scope and open-ended gameplay, are inherently and difficult to review, and Stellaris is really not an exception to that rule at all, and therefore I will be mostly focusing on how Synthetic Dawn integrates with the core game and expands on those, um, as earlier mentioned, tools that allows you to craft a more complex story. So, conceptually, Synthetic Dawn introduces features that have been requested for quite some time by the community at large, fully integrated robotic empires with all the bells and whistles. This is an experience that was kinda already explored in several mods that were available on the workshop, and seeing that these sort of mods, or at least the ideas that have been conveyed in these, uh, being now officially supported is, is actually really great. But the real question is, is it enough to validate its $10 and or local equivalent price tag? Now, objectively, it may appear a little bit shallow. It, it adds robot empires, and is that it? And thankfully, there is a, a, there is a lot more than meets the eye. Um, the story pack itself, uh, as it's so strategically branded, adds four core types of robot empires, and each of them has its own playstyle. You have your box standard robot empire, it's basically the same as an organic one, except instead of using food, it uses energy. Uh, they've got a bunch of uh, things that biological species don't have, such as a new type of purging called grid amalgamation. Then there is assimilators, the Solaris equivalent of the Borg, with the goal of integrating new species into yours. Uh, they have an inverse start compared to the mechanics from Utopia, as in they have a lot of mm, cyborg pops and then, well, actually a few cyborg pops, my apologies, but with a bunch of additional robots stacked on top of it. So, it's the inverted of Utopia's mechanics. Then you've got your classic exterminators, it's Skynet on crack, uh, your organic, they'll want to boil you boil down into energy and they like other synthetic races. So, Technically, they're not as powerful as the classic fanatic purifiers that were introduced into Utopia, though they still get pretty significant bonuses to warfare, although they like robots, whereas fanatical uh, purifiers pretty much hate everybody's collective guts. Um, then there is the most interesting one of the bunch, uh, which is the Rogue Servitors. Um, it takes the idea of the culture to the most logical extreme. So organic pops basically cannot be trusted to control themselves and are forced into the role of so-called biotrophies, where they can spend their lives in pure utopian environments. Rogue servitors love to have people to care for, and the more there are of them compared to their own numbers, the bigger the bonuses they get to their own production, because apparently they live the serve. Uh, then there is also a chance for you to have a robotic uprising, and once again the mechanists from Utopia kind of tie into this, where if you're playing an organic race and you build synthetic pops, they have the chance to rise up, and then you can choose which side you want to play on. Do you want to play as the meat bags, or do you want to play as the glorious mechanical empire? Uh, they don't really have any of the quote-unquote special government type, although the AI can sometimes generate exterminators or assimilators, depending on the situation, but still, it, it is definitely there. Now, all of these get their own civics, their own traits, each with their own bonuses and malices. So effectively, it creates new ways to play the game. So in addition, robots get their own equivalent of genetic engineering called robot modding, which in combination with the new templating system, which has been introduced in 1.8 Shopback, allows robots to be incredibly flexible because you can just build them. You can just select which kind of robot you want and you just plop them down, no problem. Whereas with Biopops, they need to grow over time. Kind of like cattle. So, sadly, there is no super advanced robo modding items, kind of like what you would expect from the genetic engineering traits. There is no plus three traits currently as of making this 
uh, review when it comes to robot modding. However, it, it does it, it does kind of limit you. Then again, your pops are effectively immortal, aside from some random breakdowns. You kind of can counter that through your policy system. In addition, Robot Empires uh, have their own fully realized set of portraits, sadly. There's only eight of them. Uh, originally, in one of the Def Diaries, there were talking about having 12 of them. Apparently, a couple were dropped, which is a bit of a shame. And maybe, I hope that they are going to be added in, maybe at some later date, but I doubt that is going to happen. Uh, there's also a flavor feature. Each uh, type of government ethic has its own narrator voice, which is kind of cool. And basically, there is different machine-only traditions that are specifically tailored and balanced to machine empires. And obviously, they're only available as you're playing as a machine empire, or in this particular case, as they're called, Gestalt Consciousness. Now, if I had to pick one thing that really really stood out for me and it completely came out of left field for me as well is the absolute wonderful soundtrack that comes with it. It is a great homage to Vangelis' Blade Runner soundtrack mixed with 80s inspired synth wave which goes hand in hand with the theme of the robotic expansion and it, it gives a very great robotic vibe to it. Um, in addition, uh, there is some other stuff, such as robot empires interacting in various dynamic ways with the already established government ethics, giving you much needed content to a fairly stagnant mid-game for anybody that plays Stellaris. You, you'll probably have experienced by now that the mid-game is a little bit... It slows down a little bit, which is a bit of a shame, and we really hope that we're going to see some more stuff about that in the future. Now. All the mentioned features are all available within the context of the quote-unquote story pack and do not require any of the previous expansions. Older Paradox games, Victoria 2, Hearts of Iron 3, they, re they required you to stack your expansions on top of each other or else they wouldn't work properly. Basically, they were using systems that um, were used in other expansions, which was a bit of a problem. Now, in general, there are almost no cases of that happening with Synthetic Dawn, which is absolutely great. There is one tiny thing. Uh, there is one Ascension perk, which is part of the Ascension system, which was obviously uh, added in Utopia and is only available to uh, Utopia players, where you can have a Ascension perk called Machine Worlds, which adds a bunch of bonuses to that planet. It allows you to terraform it and you kind of need Utopia to get access to that. But overall, aside from that, the story pack very firmly stands on its own. Now, overall, Synthetic Dawn adds a significant amount of color to an increasingly vibrant palette of option to uh, Stellaris in general. All the robot empire functions fit seamlessly into the game and add several rather unique ways to play the game in interesting ways that will keep you occupied for hours on end. Now, obviously, Paradox DLC policy has had some serious critique in the past, whether or not it's uh, that has been deserved is a little bit in the eye of the beholder. However, in this particular case, considering the amount of content and potential gameplay time added with Synthetic Dawn, in addition to a relatively fair cost of $10 and or local equivalent, I feel that Synthetic Dawn is an absolute must-have to spice up your Stellaris experience. And as of, because of that, I'm going to give it a solid 7 out of 10. I hope this was a interesting one for you. This is the first time that I'm going to do a review on the channel. We are now past the 40,000 mark, and I, I do feel that I have a responsibility to the viewers in general when it comes to delivering content and giving my opinion about this. If you like this sort of content, feel free to give a comment down below and or a like on the side. That is what that is for. If you're new here and you just bounced in from the internet and so you're just wondering, I just want to know what uh, Synthetic Dawn is about, well, that's fine. If you want to see more stuff like this, more Solaris and uh, related content, hit that subscribe button. That's why it is there. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, take good care of yourselves. And as always, eat shutter.